close your eyes. Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths. Put aside everything else and just stay with the breathing. Notice where you feel the breathing process in the body and have your attention focused right there. Try not to clamp down too hard, because that makes the breath uncomfortable. Allow the breath to have its freedom. Think of it flowing in and out of the body from all directions, and you're just staying here, keeping track of it. You're not trying to confine it. You're not trying to clamp it down. You just want to be there with the process and notice how it feels. And this way the mind can alight gently but firmly in the present moment, because the breath is something very delicate. But it's right here in the present. You want to be here in the present because this is where you want to see what's going on in your mind. If you're not here, all you know are memories or anticipations. If you want to actually see the processes of the mind, you have to be with something here in the present. So the breath is here to give you a sense of well-being. The well-being that comes from breath is also useful for undercutting any desire you may have to go wandering off. If it feels good to be here, you're a lot happier to be here. If you feel constricted, if you feel confined, you're going to run, a, run away, and that's going to be hard to pull you back, like a little kid who's beaten up by his parents, who's running away and doesn't want to come back at all. So create a good home for your mind right here. And then do your work here at home. You don't have to go running off anyplace else. The work here, of course, is figuring out what it is in the mind that causes you to cause suffering for yourself. Because that's the big issue. If the mind isn't causing suffering for itself, then nothing in the world is really a problem. And you're also causing a lot less suffering for people around you. People who can't take care of their own suffering are constantly leaning on other people. Help me with this. Help me with that. So even though some people say that it's selfish to be concerned about your own suffering, it's not. Because this is something you really can be responsible for. Nobody else can be responsible for it for you. Nobody else can solve the problem for you. You've got to do it for yourself. The teachings are here to give you guidance, but the actual work is something you've got to do for yourself. And then as you're more competent in taking care of your own problems, you're not placing any unnecessary burdens on other people either. So try to get the know of the mind right here. First settle down and then start learning how to watch the mind so you don't believe everything it tells you. It may think one thing, but the truth may be something else. You may think one thing, the opposite may also not be true. Sometimes the issues we take up are issues that are really not helpful at all in either way. As someone once said, if they can get you to ask the wrong questions, it doesn't matter what answer you come up with. Well, the mind is often getting itself to ask the wrong questions. And whatever the answer, it's all a mess. You want to answer the question, okay, what is the mind doing that's creating stress right now? What is it doing that's going to create stress down the line? How do you know? Well, you watch carefully and you probe and you question. But it requires having a good, solid sense of feeling that you belong right here to begin with. That's why we work with the breath. When you feel at home with the breath, then there's no real conflict here. You're willing to settle in. You're strengthened, you're nourished, and you're ready to do the work. <laughs>